Hello everybody, this is Levi, and today I have a speaker here. My goal with this today is really just to play around with it, see if I can get some sound out of it, and potentially see how loud I can make it. So this is a pretty standard 3-inch speaker. I pulled it out of a bigger speaker quite a while ago, and I've been meaning to do something with it, but I haven't gotten around to it. So how a speaker works is actually very simple. There's really only two or kind of three primary components. So on the base of the speaker here, you see a couple of really large ceramic magnets. These are the majority of the mass of the speaker, and they're shaped like rings. And what you can't really see is that down inside of this, attached to the cone, is a pancake kind of electromagnet. So this electromagnet being attached to the cone is free to move up and down. And there's a kind of flattened out spring in here that pulls it back to a center position. So being that a speaker is fairly simple, there's only two electrodes, just one positive and one negative. The electromagnet creates a magnetic field which interacts with the ceramic magnets at the base of it, and it either pulls the magnet down or pushes it up. And since the cone is attached to it, it moves the cone accordingly. So now if you continue to do this for many oscillations a second, then the speaker cone will continue to move up and down at a high frequency. It is this movement that is then pushing a column of air in front of it, forwards and backwards, creating a wave which we perceive as sound. So the whole system is really not complicated at all. All I need to do is create some kind of wave to go through here. Ideally, that wave would be an approximation of a sine wave. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that today, so it'll probably more likely be just a simple square wave. The first thing I'm going to do is get a resistance reading across the electromagnet that's in here. So I'm getting approximately 7.2 ohms. So I don't know exactly what model the speaker is, so I don't know how much current I can potentially run through it. What I do know is that it's 3 inches in diameter and, of course, 7 ohms. And I might be able to use that to determine approximately how much power this is rated to handle. So I've done a little bit of research, and it looks like speakers that are comparable to this one in size and resistance have ratings between about 10 and 15 watts. And I'm assuming that these speakers are intended to use in a 12 volt system, which would mean that they could maybe optimistically take a little over an amp. So at least for now, I'm going to play it safer, and one amp is going to be my current limit for this. So my speaker has a resistance of 7 ohms, and my wires will have a little bit of resistance in them too, so I could probably call that approximately 1 ohm. So if I want 1 amp of output current, I'm going to need to set my power supply to approximately 8 volts, so that with the 8 ohms, you'll have 1 amp. There we go. So I've got my speaker, and I've also got a breadboard over here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect these alligator clip wires to the electrodes here. Another thing to mention is that the only thing in here is just that electromagnet. So the thing is denoted positive and negative, but it really doesn't matter. Either way, you could run current, it wouldn't affect anything. Now I'm gonna use one of my MOSFET modules, which I have talked about in a couple of other videos. These are also available for purchase. I'll leave a link in the description for that. So this will just allow me to turn on the current to the speaker with a small voltage control. So the MOSFET is wired up, so now if I connect this 3-volt potential to the signal pin, I should be able to move the speaker, at least a little bit. Ooh, did you see that? So you can clearly see that it is moving there. It's even throwing up a few little particles on the cone. But this frequency that I'm creating, if you can even call it a frequency, is only like 10 hertz-ish. And the human ear cannot hear 10 hertz, yet you can still hear this. So the question is, why can you hear this kind of high frequency click when it's too low, hypothetically, for the human ear to catch? So this is a graph of voltage over time inside of the speaker. Like I said earlier, what I'm creating in here is a square wave. So we start out just going nice and straight at zero volts, nothing's touching it. And then we jump up immediately to our 8 volts. But this immediate jump is not very controlled, it's like a spike. So instead of just immediately stopping at our 8 volts, it instead goes up a little bit past it, and then oscillates back and forth until it evens back out. And then the power is turned off, and it goes back down to our 0 volts, and continues on. So even though the hypothetical frequency that we're creating is too slow to be recognized as sound, 
there is this oscillation right here, which is a much, much higher frequency. So it is this high frequency oscillation that comes after the spike of the square wave that creates that clicking sound. So I can't turn this speaker on and off fast enough or precise enough to get a good solid frequency out of it. So instead I need to do it with an Arduino, which means that I need to solder one up quick. So I got this Arduino on the breadboard here and I wired the signal pin of the MOSFET module to D13, which is also the LED pin. The Arduino comes with the blank program already on it, and you can hear that program is making that click. And this is also not hooked up to the power supply currently, so this is just the five volts from my laptop. So now I can change this delay value from one second to, let's say half a second, upload it, and now it's moving at twice the speed. So we'll double the frequency again here. And there you go. Gonna increase it to 10 hertz. Now remember, 10 hertz is still too low for you to be able to hypothetically hear. The human hearing range is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. So this is still the click of the oscillation that's inherent to a square wave. Now I'm gonna go for 20 hertz or hypothetical 20 hertz. Now I'm gonna go for 100 hertz. So the sound is actually playing is much higher than 100 hertz, again, it's because of that oscillation. Once we get into higher frequencies, that should diminish or not be as much of a factor. I do, it does seem like it's playing an octave up of 100 hertz, possibly, maybe. I'm not totally sure, I'm not a sound engineer, but it sounds similar to the frequency that it should be. Now I'm gonna try like 500 hertz. Now for a thousand. So here's a thousand hertz with a perfect sine wave. And then here's what I'm producing, which doesn't quite sound like the right frequency. This is a square wave. It sounds noticeably lower. So I'm just gonna keep on going higher. And remember, this is still not hooked up to the power supply. This is just the five volts off the USB. So this could be probably significantly louder. 2,000 hertz. 4,000 hertz. 5,000. It's got some weird oscillating sounds in there. Let's go to 10,000. Might not even work. <laughs> There's two tones being produced there. I think I can hear the 10,000 hertz frequency. It's super high. I imagine it's not picked up on camera at all. But the primary thing you hear is that much lower, I don't know, maybe like two or three octaves lower than the actual 10,000 hertz. But it's a terrible noise. So according to my phone, we've got a peak noise level of about 76 decibels. And that was back down to 1,000 hertz, by the way, or at least my approximation of 1,000 hertz. So now I'm gonna switch back over to the power supply and see if I can get something louder. So I'm gonna start it at about five volts and then just keep on turning it up. Oh. Yep, that's much, much louder. I was not expecting that. <laughs> okay, so now I'm measuring, I'm gonna turn around again. That got up to 86 decibels, and that was only four and a half volts. Okay, I'm gonna keep on going higher. I'm gonna put something over my ears first though. Okay, I've got some ear protection. Let's keep on going. I've got a max of 115 decibels. That was right up next to it. I'm also curious to see if there's a specific frequency band that produces higher decibels for presumably the same power input. So like do higher sounds or do lower sounds or do, you know, kind of medium sounds produce a louder noise for the same voltage. So right now it's back down to 500 Hertz and you can see the uh, decibel meter there. 77 is about the max. It's kind of 250. See if that does anything different. Oh, it's lower. Only 70, 72 there. We'll try 750. So, so far it seems like higher frequencies produce higher decibel for the same voltage. This is back up to 1000. This is 1500. Hmm, looks like we're going back down again. I'm gonna try 1250. 74 again. How about 1750? How oh, interesting. We're up to 81. Try 2,000. Now for five. 5,000. 
I think we're maxing out the speaker a little bit here, or at least for this square wave. I'm gonna jump up at 10,000, just see what it does. Yeah, much lower. It's very interesting. So this is 1500 Hertz again. 1500 is quite a bit lower than both 1250 and 750. This is 1750 Hertz. This is as high as we've gotten, 81. So it seems like so far 1750 and 2000 have produced the highest decibel. Let's go halfway in between. Oh, wow. It goes way down. That, what's up with that? 1800 flat. And that's really good. Okay, that's that's a good sound there. Oh, that's the highest right there, 1900. So it's very interesting. It seems like there's certain ranges where the sound just really drops off, but then in between those ranges, there's sounds that are much, much louder. It's fascinating. So it seems like 1900 hertz produces the loudest noise for the same voltage. It got up to 85 decibels at that range that you can see there. So knowing that, I'm gonna switch back over to the power supply at the 1900 hertz and see if we can pump in the max voltage and, and, and uh, get an even louder noise. I'm turning on the power supply. It's at four volts right now. So it looks like the max I could get up to there with the speaker being right over the microphone was right at 120 or 121, I guess, decibels. And 120 decibels is right about the threshold for permanent hearing damage. So if you were to take this speaker and put it right up to your ear, it could, you know, damage your hearing permanently. So that's quite something. I'm almost positive that the decibels would be significantly higher if you are using a better sine wave here, or maybe just a better approximation of a sine wave. But it's really interesting that just a relatively small speaker like this could get up to the the range for permanent hearing damage. So I put a little electrolytic capacitor in parallel with the output of the speaker to hopefully smooth it out a little bit. It didn't do much. I think I got a max of 123 decibels with it. So I think it might have made a little bit of an improvement, but not much of anything. I think in order to make this as loud as it could possibly be, you would need a sine wave, or at least a better approximation of it, which you could just do with the coding, but I'm not gonna do it right now. Maybe I'll do it in a future video. So today I just wanted to play around with some speakers, see what I could do with the output sound, and being able to get it over 120 decibels, granted it was very close to the speaker, but still, that's very impressive. But the circuitry for this was super simple. It's a very easy to create um, sonic frequency generator. And I've never messed around with sound stuff before, so this was, this was entertaining. But that's all I have for now, so bye. Also, I do have one much, much larger speaker. There's a size comparison for you. So this one might be able to be a little bit louder.